Good morning everybody i just wanted to show you guys something cool so for the past couple of years ever since covid my family has been using this field by our house right next to our house to plant sunflowers and they just did it for fun my aunt and uncle who run the farm they did it for fun back in 2020 just because they wanted to harvest the sunflower seeds um, you know, it's just part of their farm income, but the result of these sunflowers was so beautiful. The road is behind me that you can't see, but the sun comes up behind me and then sets in front of me over there. And the way that the sunflowers bloomed, they were all facing the road and it looked so beautiful. So we did it the following year. And then the next year, last year, we had to take a break to give the Field a little bit of time to replenish the nutrients by switching out crops but this year we're doing it again and this is what they look like so far um, there was a little bit of an issue over there with I'm not sure what happened but in the middle here they're looking pretty good and here's an update to what they look like so they should be in full bloom probably in about the middle to end of August so I'll be sure to show you guys what it looks like at that point Welcome to my channel. I'm Farah, and this is the start of a new vlog. We're in the middle of July and we're going to be heading out on vacation in a couple days. We're going um, to the Adirondack Mountains here in upstate New York to this little cabin. It's kind of like a family reunion type of vacation where a lot of my mom's side of the family gets together and we spend a week together and it's really nice. But I just wanted to film the intro real quickly because the next set of footage you're going to be seeing in a different location. So just a quick note, um, I'm gonna just let you guys know a couple books that I have started or what I'm planning on reading. So I did start this book that I got from the library called Soul Mountain. And this is really good, it's literary fiction. To be honest though, I am gonna return it to the library. It's a really big book, it's about 500 pages and I've read about a fifth of the way through so far. And it's really interesting, but it's I've had it out for so long from the library that I feel really bad and I need to just return it. And if I get it out again, then I definitely will. Or maybe I'll purchase a copy of it for myself, like a used copy. But this is this actually was, it says the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. It's by, I'm not gonna say his name right, but it's by Gao Zingjian. And it's sort of like a little bit autobiography, a little bit fiction, a little bit nonfiction. And we're following two main characters. So two different storylines that are going on within the book. Now there's a lot of things that are different about this book that I had to get used to at first. So the first character we're introduced to is known as you. So it's told in this point of view that's like you and it's present tense. So it's like, you're walking along the path, you stop at the store, you see this woman, 
and it's told like kind of that way and that's not usually my favorite. I mean, it definitely works in some storylines in some situations, but it took a little while for me to get used to that. Then there's a second character in the I point of view also being told in the present tense. So the you character, um, we learn is a tourist, kind of like an average tourist set in China. And he, it's, he's a male and he hears about this mystical mountain called Likan, I think it's called, and he wants to try to find it. So he's backpacking through these areas in China. He meets this woman who's referred to as she. She's a mysterious um, young woman that's traveling alone. He's very attracted to her. So they come together and they start to build this relationship. He is a natu natural storyteller and he tells a lot of different stories and folk tales from China and ancient China and sort of like urban legends. And so there's a lot of storytelling scattered through within his journey to find this mountain. The I person is um, basically is the author and he was misdiagnosed with getting lung cancer. He thought he had terminal lung cancer. He thought he had like a month left to live. And then on a repeat exam, his doctor was like, oh, you actually don't have lung cancer. You're totally fine. So he kind of has this new shot at life. He wants to leave behind the stress and the grind of the daily life that he has been living in the city. So he embarks on his own journey through rural China, through the mountains, through these different rural communities, um, meeting all these different people, learning about their culture. And it really is a really interesting book. I am liking it. It's just taking me a little bit to get through it. And um, I just feel like I need to return it to the library. So I think I am going to get myself um, a used copy of this and keep going with it because it's, it's really an interesting book. It's a little bit hard to follow and the plot is kind of slow. But it's, it's very insightful. We're talking, it's a, a lot about different feelings and how you're feeling during different parts of life and kind of that human experience that we don't see on the surface very often, but it's like someone's deep innermost thought. So really enjoying this, but I don't think I'm gonna be reading it anymore within this particular vlog. So the book I have going on my Kindle is called The Subtle Knife, which is by Philip Pullman. It's the second book in the His Dark Materials series, which starts with The Golden Compass. And this book is actually pretty good too. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so it's kind of hard if you don't know the, the regular story of The Golden Compass, but we're following this kid named Mike. He's young, probably 12 or 13, and he's dropping off his mom to a friend's house to stay with her. It's set in England. And um, we don't really know what's going on, but some, so there's some danger going on. Someone's looking for his mom, someone's looking for him, and he's trying to make sure she's safe. So he drops his mom off. His mom is very mentally unstable. She's very nervous, extreme panic, extreme anxiety. Um, so we don't know what happened or what's going on, but she's kind of tucked away safe. And he goes back to the house and comes to find that there are strange men in the house searching through, searching for his mother. He accidentally scares one of them and they fall down the stairs and it appears as though they break their neck and now he's running for his life because he's like, oh my gosh, I just killed someone, blah, blah, blah. So he finds this mysterious ripple within the atmosphere as he's walking down the road. He goes through it and he's transferred into an alternate reality or an alternate world that's very similar to her to his but it's not the same there he meets a young girl named lyra who is the main character and the main protagonist in the golden compass so lyra's journey lyra lives in a alternate reality magical real, realism where everybody has something called a demon which in our language obviously means something bad and evil, but in their world, it means your soul. And your soul lives outside your body and it takes the form of an animal. So everybody has these demons that follow them everywhere, that are with them, that are an extension of their self, that is kind of their higher consciousness and their higher self, sort of acting as a guardian angel. When you're a child, your demon has the ability to shape shift into whatever they want. But as you get older and you become an adult, your demon takes on a permanent animal form. So Lyra's demon shifts, shape shifts between this ferret looking animal or an ermine to a moth, to a bird, to basically whatever. So he meets them and he's just astonished by this whole idea of her having this, this demon attached to her. And she's like, mortified that he doesn't have one. So they quickly realize they're not from the same world. 
Lyra is on a mission to find this magical dust, which was a main theme within the first book where um, this group called the church um, are doing experiments on children to separate the children from their demons, which alternately kills the child and the demon, but it, it uh, um, creates this magical dust. And I don't really remember or know what the dust is used for, but it's very important. And Lyra's on a mission to find out more information about this because, or her real father, was involved and um, I have to kind of like read the summary back again about the Golden Compass but they do have a show on HBO Max that I'm going to watch to kind of catch me up again so I can remember that but anyway going going through with the subtle knife it's really good I really like the writing it's an interesting story so far so yeah that'll be my ebook that I'm working on and then my audiobook that I just got from the library is a young adult fantasy fiction called Gallant by V. E. Schwab. And this is my first book by her. I know she's a pretty popular author. Um, and I just basically found her from looking at the Goodreads list awards of the year. I think this won the best fantasy YA or whatever. So this book is okay so far. It's a bit slow. The audio narrator is a gem. He is so good. He has a beautiful British accent. And he's a very good storyteller. I'll have to look up the name of who it is. So I'll, I'll mention that the next time I sit down with you guys. So this follows the story of this young girl named Olivia who was abandoned as a child and placed into this girl's home named Marilyn. And she's not able to speak. We don't know why. She can hear, so she's mute, but she does do sign language to communicate. So all I picture for her is Wednesday Adams. That's what she reminds me of, her features and how she looks. And the whole tone of the book is very black and white, very dark, very spooky. So Olivia's special thing is that she can see ghosts. So she can see ghosts and ghouls and she's seen them her whole life. So she's not bothered by it anymore, but she really does have a hard time fitting in at this girl's school. She's kind of an outcast. She's, you know, abandoned. She misses her mom dearly. She never remembered her, but her mother left her with a journal. And as she reads the journal, she learns a little bit about her mother, but then she also learns about this place called Gallant, where she's told never to go to. That's where her family's from. And she's told if you're safe, you'll be safe as long as you don't return to Gallant. So within the journal that Olivia has, you can see her mother's mental health slowly spiraling down into madness, and we don't know why. So one day Olivia gets a mysterious letter telling her to come home to Gallant saying that um, her uncle and her family finally found her and they want to welcome her back to her home where she can have a family again. So she's really excited. She doesn't really pay attention to the warnings in the book that her mom gave her. So when she gets to Gallant, she realizes that um, nobody there wrote the letter. So they're all kind of aghast as to who wrote the letter and how she ended up there. So she meets her cousin, Matthew, or Michael. Is it Matthew or Michael? It's one of the two. Um, she meets him and he immediately is put off by her. He doesn't want her anywhere near the house. He wants her to leave immediately. He's really mean and cold to her. And she's really upset because she's so excited to be away from that girl's home and to be a place where maybe she can finally have a family. So the people that work there, Hannah and Edgar, are really kind to her. They give her all this food and she's just so happy and she feels welcomed. But she does see a lot of these ghouls and ghosts and she does see the ghost of her mother, um, which is really interesting. So we don't know why Matthew's acting this way towards her. We're introduced to snippets of this unseen or unnamed villain who is making threats saying that he needs to feed on her to live. And so we know there's something coming. So I'm a little over halfway through the book and it's very slow. Um, we finally just meet this villain or this antagonist like at the 60% mark. So the story's starting to move forward. She's able to go through this veil into this alternate like world where her house is and she sees all these really disturbing things and she gets really scared and she's being hunted down by these ghouls that are real in this in this realm and they can hurt her and they can harm her so she doesn't know why she just has no idea what's going on we don't really know what's going on yet um so yeah it's it's interesting um again it was a bit slow to get into and i'm not you know totally enjoying it but i'm already so far through that i'm just gonna 
finish it out. And hopefully it has a good twist or it has a good ending. I just have found it a little bit hard to pay attention to. So I think I'm missing a few things. I know that I'm just, sometimes when I listen to audio, that can happen unless it's really engaging and then I'm listening to every word. So that's Gallant. Those are the three books that I have going right now. Again, I'm going to stop reading this, which I'm sad about, but I will probably find it again. And then, yeah, we'll see. I'm not sure yet what books I'm going to take with me on vacation, but yeah, I will show you guys when we get there. It's our first full morning here out in the Adirondack Mountains. I'm out for a walk this morning. And it's a really nice, cool, crisp morning. I always, well, I don't forget, but it's always a little colder up here in the Adirondack Mountains than from where we live. And it just feels so nice. There's no humidity at all. It's probably in the low 60s. And um, it's just like, it's so quiet here. And I keep hearing these beautiful wood thrushes and hermit thrushes, which are some of my favorite birds that I hear all the time up here. And the air smells so good. It, you can smell the cedar wood from the pine trees and ah, it just smells so nice. And it's just beautiful. Um, so I'm out for a little walk. I'm actually on a little road that I've never been on before. I can't believe I've never walked down here but it's really quaint and cozy. There's all these little cottages. I don't want to film anybody's house, but all along this road, there's like little camps and summer homes and probably people's real homes, but I didn't sleep too well last night. So I started reading The Subtle Knife again on my Kindle, like from 3 a.m. <laughs> till about 4 a.m. when I finally felt tired again. And that book's pretty good. Um, we had a nice chapter where Lyra, one of our main characters, she finds this professor, this Oxford professor, that she hopes can help her find more information about this unique particle that they call dust. So we kind of get a nice little summary of what dust is and why it's being sought after and why in her world, this organization called the church is trying to destroy it. It has to do something, it has a religious theme with something about the, they feel as though it's the original sin. I'm not really super clear on that whole meaning, but yeah, it was nice to have a little summary as she's explaining it to this new woman who's going to hopefully be helping her. So yeah, it, overall, it's a really interesting book. It's capturing my attention. It's easy to read. Um, it's, you know, very w good writing, Philip Pullman. I mean, I always have super high hopes of doing a lot of reading while I'm here, but sometimes that isn't really the case, but we'll see. Um, we're going to be in two different locations this trip. So we're going to be three, three days here where I currently am. And then we're sharing an Airbnb with my sister on Monday. So yay, should be fun. The sun is starting to come out. I think I'm going to turn around and go back and yeah, I will check in with you guys soon. Hope you're all having a wonderful day.
So I ended up picking out two books from the local gift shop here because even though I can probably find these a little bit cheaper somewhere else, I do like to try to support the local store when I can if they have books. So I got the Complete Guide to Bird Photography. I absolutely love birds and I love photography. So I think, you know, even if there's nothing groundbreaking in here, it's just a really nice, beautiful book to look through and read about. So we ended, ended up picking up that. And then I also found this book called 100 Plants to Feed the Birds, Turn Your Home into a Healthy Bird Habitat. So yeah, it just talks about the native plants that are good for the birds in my area, which is the Northeast in the United States. And again, I just thought this would be really fun to look through. I love plants and wildlife and birds. So yeah, whatever I can plant around my house to support the natural habitat, definitely interesting. So I also got this beautiful postcard of, um, I'm not sure exactly where this is located, but every year when I come up here, I try to pick a postcard to add to my just collection. Yeah. And the scene is located in Osable in Lake Placid, which is not where we are this year, but it's close to Lake Placid. everybody well I'm back in pretty much the same spot I was the first time you saw me vlogging in this video and it's actually a week later uh, just checking in I haven't had too many opportunities or chances to vlog much this vacation we were pretty busy um, we had something to do all day long every day it felt like I didn't really get much reading done at all I brought a couple books but I didn't even touch them um, as you could have seen, I got a couple books while I was here, which is nice. And yeah, pretty much the only thing I read or, you know, kept up with was The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. And I'm about almost halfway through, so I didn't really get too far with it. But I'm really enjoying it. Um, the plot's coming together. It's really interesting. I love the world building. I really like the writing and the characters and the whole idea of what's going on. I think it's a little bit different from the first book. Um, so it's, it has a different vibe to it definitely, but I am enjoying it. It's really light and easy to read and pick up uh, on and off as I can get to it. But we're heading home today. It's early in the morning. I just wanted to get one more walk in before we leave. I should be home later today, but, but I hope you enjoyed. I'm not sure if this is going to be the end of the video, but if so, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a great reading month, and I will see you in my next video. Well, we made it home.